it's Friday, everybody. Happy Friday, Matt Helbig. How you doing, man? It's Feedback Friday. What's up, Matthew Smith? Welcome back to another episode of Feedback Friday. Here this week, we are here with Font Shop. I've been following these folks for a long old time because I love me some typography. They've been doing some really interesting stuff for a long time, but one of the things that is fascinating about them is they have gone wide. They're a wide load here, man. They're pushing some boundaries and I think it's working. So let's, let's walk through that. Obviously, if you're a font brand and you're showing off visuals of how people are using typography, you know, within, you know, different examples like these albums here, for instance, you really want, you know, big, beautiful, powerful imagery. And so what better way to try and use full screen design if possible and obviously making sure that it translates to mobile as well really nice big fonts now here they're doing something interesting that i think they're pulling it off and it's not something i generally recommend which is a centered headline with left aligned text now my guess is that they're choosing left aligned text down through here because centered aligned with this much text is really challenging to read or it becomes more challenging to read. Notice that the text is large enough that you can read it. Like this is called the measure typographically. In typography, line length is the width of a block of types of text, usually measured in units of length like inches or points or in characters per line. If the lines are too short then the text becomes disjointed. If they are too long the content loses rhythm as the reader searches for the start of each line. So that measure is such with the size of that type that it works. Now that said, I'm guessing that they're counting on people's email browsers not being like super wide since you usually don't browse an email widescreen. Um, but maybe they just, you know, account for that. I don't know. But basically, one of the reasons that it works here is because of how simple it is. They have nice big title, real clear, real large, very heavy weight. And then nice big type here that keeps your measure. Measure means the number of characters on a line. And so I think that the number of characters on a line is supposed to be less than something like 58. As long as you're in that range, then you're doing well. Some type nerd is going to say, it's not 58, it's 62. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm into this. I think they're making it work. Man, I just love seeing how people use type. From a brand perspective, I come through here very quickly. I get to see, oh man, I really like how that type works. I could see using that. I could see getting behind that. I'm going to go buy it. There's nothing that shows you the font more than like how somebody else does it. Now, one thing I might change, I guess that it could get pretty heavy weight, but if you could do a GIF there with three slides of different uses of typography and get the file size down, I think that could be pretty interesting. But they do a nice job of running through this. I think the use of embedded fonts is really great to see. I think you can poke around their code and maybe see how they're doing some of this. I think they have a um, yeah, home court advantage because they own a lot of these fonts. But it is interesting to see you know, how they're using these wackier fonts and email it's pretty unique as well that they are live text. I don't know if, if I love these hero images. I'm not really sure exactly if they're the best showcase of these individual fonts for me. I think maybe even some animation could be nice. Like I like the little pulsating heart at the top of the email, but for some of these fonts, I'd almost like to see them more embedded in the different sections. I think in some other examples, they might use color a little bit more to break up the individual sections to sort of match these styles. So to me, this is just a pretty short newsletter style focusing on these three or four brand new fonts. In general, I think it does a pretty good job on getting the message across, but I feel like there might even be a better strategy to maybe showcase these individual fonts or focusing on one and showing, you know, multiple styles on different colors and things like that. Let's look at uh, one of their others and, and keep comparing. One of the things you can see here in this email is that this white, black, yellow is a big, big part of their brand. And then what they try and do, I think, is kind of get out of the way visually so that the typography 
Examples can stand alone on their own. So I really like the way that they're continue to use this looks best in browser GIF, and this time it's a little different. The low contrast here is interesting. I was a little bit surprised by that, but let's keep going and, and see what's going on. So they're showcasing a sale, which I think is cool. They get in here and say next order is 20% off. That's kind of a neat little illustration. And this is more about them, I think, as a shop rather than the typography that they're showcasing. This feels really on brand. I also like this hover state. That's a nice little touch that they bring in here. This is fascinating to see this coming through. And then finishing, I guess, with a map to where in, it looks like probably Germany that they are. Yep, Bergmonster or something like that. I don't know, that it was almost French. One thought here is, this is another one where, this is interesting to me. They almost are using this as like a movie credits, the way that they're like talking about managing directors and things like that, but it's like, is that serving the user? You know, that's one that I've always asked. And if it's not, like if this isn't real critical information to me, then, then maybe it could go. Or maybe it could be buried in a link that I could, as a user, go and, and read more about. Some of those kinds of things. But I, I really do appreciate the consistency of the illustrations. And this one's really on brand. Feels pretty good. Yeah, I really like this one. I feel like paring down the yellow throughout the rest of the email using those brand colors is a smart move. So this one actually, you know, compared to the last one, to me, feels a little bit more put together. You know, as a product update email and like a discount email, this one's pretty straightforward. I don't really have that much feedback. I think they're using formatting in a really effective way of using bold and font sizes and things like that, keeping things pretty simple and pared down. And I think these give me enough information, but still lead me to want to maybe go to a landing page and learn a little bit more. So overall, I, yeah, I think this one's pretty straightforward and a pretty clean example of an email. Cool. Yeah, I agree, man. I, I think this is a really basic newsletter. It's just showing me some text, some images, and some CTAs. But doing that, they've done it really well. One of the things that a lot of people end up doing is they add complexity to their emails that aren't necessary and end up sort of creating a muddy water situation where it's hard to know, you know what to do as a user. In this case, I'm very clear on what I want to do. You know, I want to start exploring or I want to shop or I want to learn more about this interview. So I'm pretty into the simplicity. If you're going to have a, a very simple newsletter, this is a great way to do it. So good work, Font Shop. If anybody has any questions about uh, Font Shop or questions directly to Font Shop, let us know in the comments. Always, uh, please subscribe, send this uh, episode out. Let us know how you'd like to see it improve or other brands that you'd like to see showcased. See you next week, Emo Geeks. See ya.